Have you ever had a ringing in your ears? Have you ever been disturbed by a deep rumbling sound when you let down the window of a fast-moving car? Have you ever wondered what makes wind instruments sound? Haven't you? And why do power lines howl in strong winds? Just wait, and you'll hear an explanation of some similar phenomena. Let's start at the beginning. First of all, what do we call sound? It's hard to say precisely. For the time, let's just say that sound is a pressure wave that varies in time and space. If you make a body vibrate, such as a guitar string, a cymbal, or a tin plate, its parts begin to move back and forth. The forward movement compresses the air and increases the pressure, like a piston. And as soon as the object moves back, the pressure will decrease due to the suction effect. So the air pressure begins to fluctuate. Percussion instruments produce clanging or rumbling sounds this way. Also, a loudspeaker operates in the same way. But there, the electric current makes the membranes pulsate. The pressure fluctuations of a flow can also create sounds. In our first clip, we already talked about turbulence. It is no surprise that not only the velocity of the fluid, but also its pressure fluctuates in such a chaotic flow. But these fluctuations do not repeat regularly. They are rather random, which sounds like a buzz. Such sizzling hissing sounds reveal the location of leakages when gas escapes from a pipe, or reveal the puncture if you check a damaged tire of your bike. But not only turbulence creates noise and flows. A clearly audible sound is heard if we place obstacles into a stream. For example, a longish body, say a cylinder. In this case, the flow separates alternately from both sides of the body, on the back. Thereby, a series of vortexes is generated, which is named Kármán Vortex Street, after the world-famous Hungarian engineer Theodor von Kármán. Due to this vortex street, pressure fluctuations occur at the curved surface of the cylinder and produce a relatively clear sound. The same mechanism generates that howling music in strong winds on transmission lines, chimneys, bridges, and other longish structures. Have you ever heard this whistling sound around poles or electric wires? If not, listen carefully next time. Much stronger sounds can arise if a more complicated obstacle is placed in the flow. For example, a hollow body. Who hasn't played with blowing air over the mouth of an empty or half-full bottle and trying to produce clear sounds from it? The same effect occurs when you let down the window of a rushing car. Seen from the inside, pressure fluctuations are created by the headwind passing the cabin. However, a car is larger than a bottle. Hence, the oscillations repeat less often, and the sound will be more rumbling and deeper. How can this phenomenon be explained? Well, air is at rest inside the cavity, but it moves with high speed above the vent. In such cases, the flow velocity wants to get equalized. Therefore, flow instability arises at the mouth of the hollow. This instability wave hits the back edge of the mouth and creates pressure oscillations, that is, a sound. The sound propagates both into the interior of the cavity and to the outside. However, it will be reflected from the inside, thereby disturbing the flow pattern at the mouth of the cavity. What happens then? A new unstable flow sets off from the upstream edge of the vent. It moves along with the air, gets amplified, and hits the back edge of the cavity. This generates sound waves again, and the process continues until the flow stops or you close the window. So handle quickly, please. This sound effect can be very disturbing because the body of a vehicle is never perfectly smooth. From a fluid mechanics point of view, panel joints act also as cavities, so these gaps produce extra noise. Military aircrafts of the 1940s and 50s produced an even more deafening sound after opening their bomb bays. Since the speed of a plane and the size of a bomb bay are much larger, the inner parts of the aircraft could hardly withstand the stress caused by pressure fluctuations. So sooner or later, they broke, like a piece of wire that you bend over and over again. But this is not really desirable on a plane loaded with heavy bombs. 
since the opening of landing gear bays caused similar sound effects today. This problem can greatly disturb people living near the runways of airports. In addition to the noise, such cavities also cause flow losses and the aircraft will consume more fuel. Since then, many solutions were born to reduce this effect. For example, loudness can be remarkably reduced by modifying the edges of the cavity. A good example is that little spoiler mounted on the front edge of the sunroof. It breaks up the instability waves. Whistles and pipes sound in a similar way as cavities. They create various tones on their own, or as part of musical instruments, organs. If you look at a pipe in detail, you'll see that the blown-in air exits through a long and thin slit, then hits the sharp wedge, located opposite the slit. But the air is almost at rest above and below the flow. For cavity tones, slow and fast domains formed. But here we see a slow-fast-slow slow transition. Oscillations easily develop in such a flow configuration, which results in an unstable undulation, which propagates towards the wedge. The role of the wedge is to stabilize the oscillations, which were caused by the impinging waves. The resulting sound effect is not really strong. But if you add a cavity, like the body of an organ pipe or a recorder flute, then sound waves will bounce back from the interior of the cavity. They create further instability waves, resulting in a feedback loop. This amplifies the oscillations of the flow, and also the sound. That is why a nearby organ pipe can be deafeningly loud. The pitch of the sound can be adjusted by the size of the cavity, or resonator as the musicians call it. The frequency of a sound depends on the repetition time of the oscillations or in other words, on the delay of sound waves bouncing back from the resonator cavity. In a pipe organ, the length of the pipes determines this time delay. In shorter pipes, the rebounds are quick, giving a high pitch, while the tone of longer pipes is deeper due to the slower reflection. The musician controls this rebound time by closing the tone holes of the recorder. As a rule of thumb, Closing more holes will increase the delay, so a lower pitch, a deeper sound, is heard. To achieve the highest pitches, all tone holes should be left open. In addition to the cavity size, the pitch depends also on the strength of blowing, and this is what a virtuoso musician knows. It should be noted here that every musical instrument creates multiple sounds at the same time. The tone and timbre of a good instrument depends ultimately on the relative strengths of these harmonic or partial components. The formation of harmonics is also influenced by the fact that the, recently mentioned, feedback may develop with various periods. Let's listen now to the C note played on a recorder flute as a whole and split into its partial tones. Harmonic partials sound together in a pleasant way. But their proportions and the dynamics of their formation is affected also by the body of the instrument. This is the big secret why one flute sounds more beautiful than the other. Our mechanical engineers of the Hydrodynamic Systems Department at the University of Technology in Budapest are modeling such flow-induced sounds. In cooperation with the electrical engineers from the Networked Systems and Services Department, our goal is to better understand such phenomena. Based on mathematical descriptions, we can then develop new methods for constructing quieter cars and ventilation systems, or design better musical instruments. <laughs>